Hallelujah. Okay, so uh, a few days ago we started this lesson, you know, concerning the Ruach Hakodesh, you know, based upon a question that was asked during the lesson called the experiment, you know, um, in which, you know, we're currently doing, you know, but the question was, do you need the Holy Spirit to be holy? That was the question. And uh, unbeknownst to myself, this was uh, really a sore spot for a lot of folks, you know, um, because the answer is no, you don't need the Holy Spirit in order to be holy. And so um, the previous lesson, this is actually part two, and the previous lesson is, is uh, already uploaded. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. Um, within that lesson, we go into why you don't need the Holy Spirit to be holy. You know, and essentially it's because the Holy Spirit did not come until after the crucifixion of Yahshua. You know, and within that lesson, we we show, you know, that the Holy Spirit is a specific spirit. It is the comforter. It is the spirit of truth. You know, it's not any and every spirit of Elohim. It is the spirit of truth. It is the comforter. It is the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, and it did not it, um, come to humanity until after Yahshua had ascended and prayed to his father that he was sent. You know, even as scripture foretold. And so knowing that, we also know that you must not need the Holy Spirit to be holy because we know that there was many people that were deemed holy via scripture before Yahshua even came on the scene. Amen. You know, we're talking about our Moseses, our Elijahs, our Elishas, our, you know, um, Noahs, you know, who even walked with Elohim and, you know, so on and so forth. There's plenty of, you know, holy people that lived prior to Yahshua's day. Amen. You know, and to say that you can't be holy except you have um, it, you can't be holy except you have the Holy Spirit would negate them folks from being holy. And we know that's just simply not true. And scripture, you know, proves that that isn't true. And all that's in the first lesson. So we're not going to go any further into that. But you know, today we're going to talk about the role of the Holy Spirit, you know, the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen. And, uh, you know, this is a pretty big subject, um, bigger than I thought it was. And we probably won't be done with it today either. Uh, nevertheless, we're going to get in what we can. Let's go. You know, so prior to getting into the role of the um, Holy Spirit. Let's address all the nicknames for the Holy Spirit in the Brit Kadashah. As aforementioned in the previous lesson, you know, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is only found in the Brit Kadashah in the New Testament scriptures because he didn't come until after the crucifixion of Yahshua. He's referenced as the Holy, the Holy um, Spirit um, and the Holy Ghost, of course, but also the Holy Comfort. I mean, I'm sorry, the comforter, the spirit of truth, the spirit of promise, the simply the Ruach, the gift of Elohim, the gift of the Holy Holy Ghost or the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promise of, of my father or the promise of, of the father um, is uh, simply the father of the spirit of the father due to his being sent of the father, but at the request of Yahshua. Amen. All right, so we should all be on the same page now as to whom we're talking about here today. The Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth. You know, we're not talking about any and every spirit of Elohim. Amen? We're only talking about the Holy Spirit, you know, that is referenced in these ways that uh, speaks specifically to the Spirit of Truth. 
you know, uh, also, well, that's, I pretty much clarified that also, it should be clear as to who we're not talking about. And that, that is, you know, what I just said. Now that said, let's concern ourselves with to whom Barack Hakodesh was sent to, um, to begin with, you know, and this is found in Acts 2, 38 and 39. Let me have my first reader read Acts 2, 38 and 39, please. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahushua Messiah, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of Ruach HaKodesh. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Adonai our Elohim shall call. Hallelujah. Okay, so the apostles and approximately 111 um, others. Uh, you know, uh, were gathered, were gathered with them in the upper room. You know, uh, I think my um, my math was off there. You know, uh, there was 11, 11 of them, and it was approximately a hundred and hundred and twenty. No, uh, that's right, one hundred eleven. So it was approximately one hundred eleven. Uh, no, no, yeah, that that, that would be wrong. Um, 131? 132? Okay. I, yeah. Okay, so, you know, nine would give us 120, right? You know, so uh, we have plus three more. You know, so that that would, uh, well, plus two more because it was only it was only 11 of them because, you know, Judas was dead by this time. Yeah, yeah, it was 100, 120 total. Well, no, no, um, you have to take the 120 and you got a minus the 11, you know, so. Yeah, whatever it is, it was just those, you know, <laughs> it was just those others which were gathered with them in the upper room that day. And they were the first ones to receive Ruach Hakodesh, right? But as we learned, um, here is promised to all that are called of Elohim from that uh, point forward, you know? And so we, we, this is what we learned here. Peter is telling them, you know, after they experience, um, you know, receiving the rock and everybody once seeing it, you know, he says to them, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift as well, you know? And he tells them the promises unto you and to your children and all that are far off. Well, we're far off, I mean, you know, so that speaks to us as well, you know, but how is this to happen? How do we actually receive Ruach HaKodesh? Yes, we're to repent and to be baptized, but what does these things mean? You know, and, you know, yeah, I don't think people get it. Like when, when you're going through scripture, yeah, you have to, you can't take anything for granted. You know, people, you know, like, you know, they read this and they're like, yeah, I know what repentance and baptism, baptism is. Yeah. You know, but do you really? Have you ever looked it up? Or are you just going off of what you heard throughout the years? You know, because uh, it doesn't matter what we think. It matters what scripture teaches. Amen? You know, so the answer to the question is um, actually holiness. And when we talk about repentance, we're talking about, um, you know, entering back into holiness. You know, which means to be set apart for Yah's use. You know, so when the gospel says for you to repent, it's telling you, you know, get back in a position where Yah can use you. Amen? Amen. Because he can't utilize you if you're in, uh, if you're in sin. Yeah. You know, and so this is the, sin is the very thing that caused us to be separated from the most high. You know, so this is why, you know, one needs to repent so that they can be once again, set apart for Yah's use. And this is the main reason why Yahushua's gospel starts off uh, with repentance. Now, we'll consider baptism shortly, but for now, let's get this repentance thing down. You know, Matthew 4, 16 says, the people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region of the, in the shadow of death, light sprung up. Now, it says, from that time, Yahushua began to preach and to say, repent, 
for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know, now I want you to first consider that what light represents. You know, um, for those of you all who in in the discipleship course, you you would of course know that light rep scripturally speaking, light represents, you know, um uh knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, or understanding, knowledge, wisdom, however you want to um uh list them. But you know, so here it is what, what's being said is the people who sat in darkness, they saw wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, and in the shadow of in the region of the shadow of death, the same wisdom, you know, understanding and knowledge sprung up, you know, and it began to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, this word repent is metanoia. This means to think differently, you know, and everybody, you know, like if you like take a consensus and you ask the average person, the average quote unquote Christian, you know, what does repent? Uh, what, what does it mean to repent? You know, eight times out of 10, they're going to tell you it means to turn and go the other way. You know, they're going to tell you it means to, you know, turn around and go the other way. And that is not the definition of repentance. You know, that is the definition of conversion, but not repentance. As you see here, metanoio, which is the word translated for, on um, the Greek word translated for repent, means to think differently or afterwards, that is to reconsider, you know, and it also, um, compunction, you know, and sorrow enters into the equation, but essentially it means to think differently you know, um, to reconsider. So what Yah is saying, you know, he's, he, 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 he sprung up as light. The people in darkness saw a great light and they began to, they began to see the wisdom, understanding and knowledge that Yahshua was, was spreading abroad. And it began to cause them to think different, to reconsider how they were currently thinking. Amen. And that is the true essence of repentance. So if one was to truly repent, they'd have to start by thinking differently. That is by reconsidering their way in the light of Yahshua's way of seeing things. See, because when Yahshua came, he didn't see things the way the prevailing leaders of Yahuda saw things. He didn't see things the way the prevailing clergy of his day saw things. In fact, he didn't see things the way that the prevailing clergy of our day see things. Amen? Amen. You know, so if one was to truly repent, they have to first start by thinking differently and reconsidering their way in light of Yahshua's way of seeing things. So that said, for many to truly repent, they would have to reconsider the fact that Yahshua said that we should pick up our torture stakes, that is our crosses, and follow him. They'll have to reconsider that he never said that we were to do things any different than he did. He never said do anything any different than he did himself. In fact, quite the contrary. He said we were to follow him. Amen? You know, so if one was to truly repent today, they would have to start by thinking differently and looking at things in the light of Yahshua's way of seeing things. They would have to begin to follow him. Amen? Amen? Reconsider their way of doing things and begin to follow him, even as he asked. Amen? You know, when we look at Matthew Yahoo 16, 24, it says, then said Yahshua to his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his torture stake and follow me. Who is teaching Who, yeah, yeah, who is teaching, but who is teaching for folks to do this today? 
I know I am, but who else is teaching for folks to actually do this, to deny themselves? Deny themselves of what? To deny themselves and take up their torture state and follow Yahshua. Luke 14, 27, whosoever do not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. And Luke 9, 23, and he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross, that is his torture stake, daily and follow. This is not something you do one time. This is not a one-time occurrence. This is something you do on a daily basis or something you ought to do on a daily basis. Amen. See, and this is very important to understand because if you don't understand this, then you're not going to understand what it truly means to repent. You know, you can't look at things the way you see things and think it's okay. You can't even look at things the way that the pastor sees things and think it's okay. Or whomever the clergy is. You have to look at things the way that Yahshua saw things. And that's the way you have to follow. And how can we know what that is? Simply by following him. If he said it, you say it. If he did it, you do it. Amen? Amen. You can never get in trouble for imitating your example. He came down to be an example unto us of the way that leadeth unto life. You cannot get in trouble by following his example. But you can get in trouble by deterring from that way that he showed for right. And there's some prevailing dogma, you know, that exists in our day and time that teach people to do just that. Yes, to not do what he said and not do what he did, but instead to trust that he did it all for you mm -hmm. so that you don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. That's a lie from the pit of hate. If he said it and he done it, then you should say it and do it. Yeah. Follow him. As long as you follow him, you can't get in trouble. Step where he stepped. Say what he said. Do what he did. You can never get in trouble like that. Hence, like I said, most people today need to repent. And began to look at things in light of how Yahshua saw things. And began to follow the example that he set. You know, and in order for most people to do that, that's going to take some major repentance. Yeah. That's just a fact of the matter. Let me have my next reader read Yochanan 16, 13, and 14, please. I'll be it when the eve the ruach of truth is come. He will he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of me and shall show it unto you. Hallelujah. Okay, so. We're talking about the Holy Spirit, the Ruach of Truth. Says he will guide you into all truth. Now, unfortunately, many who have received Ruach HaKodesh seem to think that because they received him, that it's impossible for them to be misled or for them to be in the wrong, seeing that the Ruach HaKodesh leads into all truth. And so some people take that to mean that they couldn't possibly be wrong because they already don't receive the Ruach HaKodesh, you know, and so, you know, he's leading and guiding them so they can't be in the wrong. They can't be misled. That is a wrong way of looking at things. See, they don't consider that Yahshua was speaking to his apostles when he said this. He wasn't speaking to the multitudes, he was speaking to his apostles when he said this. And the Ruach HaKodesh may only be meant to lead the ecclesia whom he was speaking to or even select members thereof 
into all truth. Nor do they consider the possibility that only the ecclesia as a whole are led into all truth and not individual. It doesn't even have to have to mean that each individual of the ecclesia received all truth, but collectively, because they are they were all to be one. Amen. You know, even though this makes perfect sense, seeing that the ecclesia is whom he left in charge of his kingdom until his return, even giving them the keys to the kingdom. Remember he gave Peter the keys to the kingdom? Not to mention that it's the ecclesia's job to teach everyone else, which would make perfect sense why he would have his Ruach, the Ruach HaKodesh, lead them into all truth so that they can teach everyone else the truth. When he was, you can never go wrong if you follow the example. When he was walking the earth and he was leading and guiding his ecclesia, you know, his apostles, did they know everything he knew? Then why would you think that when the Ruach Kapodesh that he sent via his father came upon humanity, that he blessed everybody to know the same thing, to have the same level of uh, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding? It doesn't follow the example. You know, so even though this makes perfect sense, seeing that the ecclesia is whom he left in charge of his kingdom until he returned and giving them the keys to the kingdom, and not to mention that the ecclesia's job is to teach everyone else. You know, a lot of people think that they can have all these things that they're that because they had a rock cockle desk, you know, they you know they're being led into all truth that. You know, they can't, they can't be misled, that they can't be in the wrong. You know, and this is just simply not true. You know, and, you know, consider Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, it says that he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Mashiach. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of Elohim unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature, stature of the fullness of Messiah. You know, so, you know, we see here that it truly was the ecclesia's job to teach everyone else. So he's, he's, not, he's not, he hasn't given everyone who receives the Ruach HaKodesh the same level of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. If that was the case, it would be, there would be no need for the ecclesia to teach anyone. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, but this is the way that many people today perceive these passages. Also consider Yochanan 14, 25, and 26. My next uh, reader, please. These things I have spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Ruach HaKodesh, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Hallelujah. And so likewise, when it comes to this passage, many interpret this passage to mean that they don't need the ecclesia. That is, um, Yahushua's apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers who are given for the perfecting of the saints. They errantly believe that they can learn on their own. And this is what you see now today. You know, every, every, um, yeah, I'm not going to use that expression. But um, everybody, you know, many people, I should say, many people, you know, think that they can do this on their own, that they can learn this on their own, you know, um, and that they don't need you know, y'all's apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, you know, and, some, and and many of them, you know, not only go about to teach themselves, you know, but also, you know, start YouTube channels, YouTube channels to teach others. And instead of perfecting the saints, they're 
making sure that the sex don't become complete. That word perfect, you know, means to be perfect, means to be complete. And instead of completing the saints, they're causing them to remain in error and even error even more so. You know, and that's because, you know, many of them believe they can do this on their own. You know, unfortunately, they don't understand how Ruach, how Kodesh works, but he doesn't work with everyone the same way. And he doesn't give everyone the same wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, or even the same gifts. You know, let's let's consider Ephesians 4, 7. It says, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Messiah. See, everyone gets a measure of the gift of Mashiach, but that does not mean everyone gets the same measure. Amen? Consider 1 Corinthians 12, 11. But all these work of that one and self-same spirit, dividing every man severally as he will. So, in other words, the Ruach HaKodesh gives to whom he chooses how he chooses. Amen? You know, so he doesn't give everybody the same thing or the same measure of things. To speak to that, consider 1 Corinthians 12, 27 through 30. It says, now ye are the body of Mashiach and members in particular. And Elohim have set some in the ecclesia. First apostles. Secondarily, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healing. Helps governments, diversities of, um, of tongues. Are all apostles? No. Are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracles? Uh-uh. Have all the gift of healing? Nope. Do all speak with tongues? No. Do all interpret? No. Because he gives severally as he will, as he chooses. Amen? You know, and so a lot of people do not understand this. And it gets a lot of people in trouble. Let me have my next reader read Acts 8, 13 through 17, please. Then Simon himself believed also and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered holding the miracles and signs which were done. Now the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samira had received the word of Elohim. They sent unto Peter and John, who when they came down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. Only they only they were baptized in the name of Adonai, Yahushua. Then they laid their hands upon them and they received the Holy Ghost. Okay. You know, so hereby we have an example. Within the original ecclesia or church that Yahushua um, left behind, right? You know, Ruach ha we have an example of Ruach HaKodesh, you know, that is the Holy Spirit, you know, actually dealing differently within their ranks. Hence, Ruach HaKodesh wouldn't fall upon the Samaritans until Peter and Yochanan, who obviously had a larger measure of Ruach HaKodesh than Philip, even though Philip was doing miracles and signs. Can you see that? Philip was doing miracles and signs. That was evidence that he had Ruach HaKodesh. Yet, Peter and Yochanan was needed to pray and lay hands upon them for them to receive Ruach HaKodesh. Can you see that? So, they had different measures of Ruach HaKodesh. You know, this brings me to another point, And that is, some seem to think just because they believe the gospel of Yahshua that they automatically have Ruach HaKodesh which is also proven untrue with this above passage. You see, you had folks that was actually, you know, baptized, you know, in the name of Yahshua, yet they still had not received Ruach HaKodesh. Amen? They believed and they were baptized, yet they still had not received Ruach HaKodesh. So you don't get Ruach HaKodesh automatically. 
And if you ever receive Ruach Kapodesh, trust me, it'll be something memorable. You will remember it. You will know exactly when it happened. Make no mistake about it. Amen? There are also those that think because they work in the ministry or felt led to do so, that they must have Ruach HaKodesh. And this also is a fallacy. Therefore, let us greatly consider this next example. Let me have my next reader read Acts 18, 24, 25, and then jump down to um, Acts 19, 1 through 6, please. A certain Yehudim named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Adonai, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Adonai, knowing only the baptism of the Adonai. Acts 19, 1 6. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, What unto what then were ye baptized? And they said unto Yochanan's baptism. Then said Paul, Yochanan verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Messiah Yahushua. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Adonai Yahushua. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. All right, let's take a look at this. Now, first off, we start in 18, Acts 18, 24, and it tells us that we're speaking about a certain uh, one of the Yahudim named Apollos, amen? You know, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man, and mighty in the scriptures, hallelujah. And it says that this man was instructed in the way of the Adonai, being fervent in the spirit. Did you, did you hear that? being fervent in the spirit. But that is not fervent in the Ruach HaKodesh. Undoubtedly, he had a spirit of Elohim in that he was instructed in the way of the Adonai and he was diligently doing the work of, of the Most High. Amen? But he was doing so knowing only the baptism of Yochanan. See, what I'm trying to get you to see is that you can have a spirit of Elohim that is a good spirit of Elohim, but it not be the Ruach HaKodesh, and you can do fervently in the Ruach, fervently in the spirit of Elohim, but that still doesn't mean that that's the Ruach HaKodesh, the spirit of truth, the comforter that was promised to be sent. And we have an example in scripture of this very thing right here with Brother Apollos. Now, it tells us in 19.1 that it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Cor, uh, Corinth that Paul, he was in the, in, the, uh, in the area, and he asked, and they asked him, have you received Ruach HaKodesh since you believe? Now, this is, this is our evidence and proof that he didn't have Ruach HaKodesh and that this spirit is not being spoken of as um, the Ruach HaKodesh. Because he says, we have not so much as even heard whether there be any Ruach HaKodesh. Never even heard of them. Didn't have them. Amen? And so when we jump down to verse 4 of Acts 19, you know, Paul began to tell him, John, he baptized with the baptism of repentance saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is on Mashiach Yahushua. You know, and they heard this and they were baptized in the name of, of Yahshua. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, Ruach came on. Now, 
He has the Ruach HaKodesh. Can you see that? You know, and so this is this is very a very important lesson, you know, that doesn't get brought out very much. You know, but this is a very important lesson, you know, when you're speaking about Ruach HaKodesh, you know, to show folks that, yeah, you know, you can be doing good and you can be, you know, zealous for Yah and you can be on fire for him and, you know, and you can be taught even in the in the way, but that don't mean you have Ruach HaKodesh. You can, you can have a spirit of Elohim, but that doesn't mean you have Ruach HaKodesh. You understand? You know, and notice the same recipe is followed. Repentance and baptism, and then come where I cock with that. Did you see that? You know, he had repentance already, you know, because he was baptized in the baptism of Yokanah, which is the baptism of repentance. Amen. You know, so he had he had that, but he he didn't have Yahshua. And so he had to be baptized into Yahshua. And then Paul was able to lay hands on him and Ruach HaKodesh came upon him. That's huge. Now, take note that in the last example, how the difference in baptisms played a part in Apollos and his fellow ministers receiving Ruach HaKodesh. Now, also think, think back to how Apostle Peter told the people that they had to repent and be baptized to receive Ruach HaKodesh. I got a little ahead of myself, right? Uh, the difference between the two baptisms, the two baptisms is that one, that is Yochanan's baptism, speak to being inducted into an assembly of Torah keepers only. Because they didn't have the commandments of Yahshua. And many people now today, many you know, so-called Christians, they don't have the commandments of Yahshua. No one, no, that no one's trying to actually do that. But they're essential, you know, because if you're going to see things the way Yahshua saw things, then you're going to have to have his commandments, you know, say a lot. But this isn't a lesson on that. So the difference between the two baptisms is, is that um, Yochanan's baptism speak to being inducted into an assembly of Torah believers only. And that's that's what you're doing when you get baptized. You're being inducted into an assembly. You know, whereas the other, i.e. Yahushua's um, baptism, speak to being inducted into assembly that keeps Torah as well as Yahshua's commandments. You see the difference? And this is why when they were baptized in the name of Yahshua, that then they were able to receive Ruach HaKodesh. See, you know, as long as they just was Torah keepers only, they couldn't receive Ruach HaKodesh. Because they didn't, they weren't in the name of Yahshua. To be in the name of Yahshua is to be in his character, authority, and reputation because it's the character, authority, and reputation that a name entails. Amen? You know, so once you, once you understand these things and you're able to see these things, then you can oftentimes find where you are in the course of things. Now that you know that reception of Ruach HaKodesh isn't automatic, Consider Luke 13, 11 and 13. It says, if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give Ruach HaKodesh or the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Yes, some will need to ask for y'all to send them Ruach HaKodesh. Does the Spirit say ye have not because ye ask not? Amen. And now we're ready to summarize what we've learned thus far concerning Ruach HaKodesh. Ruach HaKodesh is the gift of Elohim to those who believe the gospel of Yahushua, which started out as repent for the kingdom of Elohim is at hand, but now includes Yahushua's life, crucifixion, and resurrection as well. As well as those that are baptized into Yahushua's name. So you have to you have to repent and be baptized. Amen. We learned that Ruach HaKodesh is promised to all of Israel as well as the Gentiles. Additionally, we learned that just because 
ye believe the gospel and are baptized doesn't mean that you automatically have Ruach HaKodesh living within you. And that ye may need to ask for him to be sent. And for those that do have the Ruach uh, residing within them, they're not necessarily capable of doing any or all of what the next person that has Ruach HaKodesh can. For Ruach HaKodesh deals, each, deals with each believer differently even by measure, by the measure of Ruach that they receive. We also learned that Ruach HaKodesh reserves certain gifts exclusively for the ecclesia. That is the fivefold ministry whose job it is to edify the body of Mashiach, which by the way, didn't include miracle signs and wonders. The fivefold ministry didn't necessarily include miracle signs and wonders. What if Ruach HaKodesh doesn't choose to show someone all things? Does that mean that they don't have Ruach HaKodesh? What if he doesn't choose um, even to bring to memory things Yahshua said? Does that mean he don't have Ruach HaKodesh? Likewise, when it comes to one speaking in tongues, you know, if one doesn't speak in tongues, does that mean they don't have Ruach HaKodesh? Of course not. But yet... There's still many people that teach that if you don't speak in tongues, you don't have the rule. Maybe one's measure is only to testify of Yahshua, even as we read that this is one of the uh, works of Yah of Ruach HaKodesh, or only to glorify him, because this too is a work of Ruach HaKodesh. Amen. You know, he, he comes to testify of Yahshua and to glorify Yahshua. We also learned a vital lesson that just because scripture teaches that Ruach HaKodesh will lead into all truth and teach all things, etc., doesn't mean that these things pertain to any and everyone that has received Ruach HaKodesh. You know, a lot of folks, you know, they just read stuff and they like to lay claim to it. You know, oh, yeah, 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 I got all this. No, no, you don't. You know, you, you, no. No, it don't work that way. You know, Ruach HaKodesh gives separately as he will. You know, he use, utilizes his own discretion. Amen? Lastly, we learned that a, that a large part of Ruach HaKodesh's ministry is to reprove us when we become worldly. That is, when we've made ourselves the very enemies of Elohim. And uh, this is this is found in, in, in Luke. I, I'm not certain that I put this passage in here, uh, but it was supposed to be in here. But you know, uh, yes, it speaks of the job of Ruach Hakodesh is to reprove the world, to reprove the world, you know, and. When we become worldly, we become the enemies of Elohim. You know, and this is one of the, the main roles of Ruach HaKodesh is to reprove us when we become worldly. That is when we've made ourselves the very enemies of Elohim. You know, consider Matthew 16, 23 says, but he turned and said to Peter. Now remember Peter, is whom he gave the keys to the kingdom to. He was the head of the ecclesia. He turned to Peter and said, get you behind me, Satan. For you are an offense to me, for you mind not the things that be of Elohim, but those that be of man. The Ruach HaKodesh that was in Yahshua was rebuking Peter because he had been led into the world and began to mind the things of that be of men over the things that be of Elohim. And this is how Ruach HaKodesh works in our lives. You know, unfortunately, because many folks don't equate him to doing this work, when he comes to show them how they're in error and how they're out of the way and in a way that's going to lead them to damnation, they believe oftentimes that 
that couldn't be the Ruach HaKodesh because he one leading and guiding them into all truth. Never do they stop to think that this is the truth that they're lead, that he's leading them into so that they won't be condemned by showing them the error of their ways. And this is very important that people grasp this because this is one of the things that the Ruach will cause saints to do to go to those who are worldly and point out the error of their ways. This is why we see in James 4, you know, uh, scripture saying that those who do so will cover a multitude of sins. Amen? Amen. You know, so I pray that through today's lessons, through today's lesson, you learn a little bit more and have a little better understanding of how Ruach HaKodesh works in the world and within the believers today. That's all I have for you today. I pray with the blessing.